He said, do you glean from the sages and oral tradition as long as it does in conflict with the revelation of Jesus? There is nothing really wrong on surface level with the rabbinic tradition. The rabbinic tradition is not an issue. I believe we can operate in and out of rabbinic tradition and the oral law. We can operate in and out of it. The problem with the oral law, with rabbinic Judaism, is the rabbinic worldview that the oral traditions are the words of God and they were spoken by God on Mount Sinai. If they are really spoken from God on Mount Sinai, then it binds the believer or the person who holds this position to all of its words. And the difficulty is that the oral law indeed rejects Jesus Yeshua as the Messiah and has terrible things to say about him. Not only that, but the codifiers of the Jewish law uh, consider Jesus a heretic, a sorcerer, amongst other things. Rambam, one of the most uh, famous, earliest codifiers of Jewish law, said, may his bones be uh, broken down to nothing in his Egeret Timon in the 13th chapter, his letter to Yemen. So I can't adopt the wholesale rabbinic perspective of these being the words of God. Because, why? Because they are rejecting the truth of what the New Testament teaches. Therefore, I have to reject these ideas. But can these things be part of the traditions of the House of Israel and the way that I'm living and operating my life? The issue and the problem isn't that we are operating in traditions that might be part of the traditions of the House of Israel. The problem is if you are allowing another authority outside of the Word of God to override the written Word of God. We all have traditions. If you're part of a church, you have a tradition of when to worship. There are cultural norms of how you dress, where you go, um, things that you say, the way that you greet each other. Your service is deeply embedded with traditions that have been developed over the history of your um, denominational expression. And I, and I don't say that disparagingly. What I'm saying is, is that you have had traditions that have developed that are very meaningful and speak to your cultural expression. I love using um, Jamaican dancehall gospel music as an example, that there are that there's worship that is being done through gospel dance hall music when dance hall music isn't a gospel thing it isn't something that speaks of the complexity of god's unity and even some of the rhythms can be said to be um sexual or seductive but i believe that they can be redeemed and used for the god of israel it's the same way with those things even though these traditions of the house of israel don't bring or convey holiness they're not the things themselves that bring holiness but they can be a, an avenue and an aspect of worship that god can use clean up and call people to but not as self salvation, right? And even the traditions can be beautiful things as well, even though people have perverted them. He says, is it wrong I wear a tali when I pray? No, it's not wrong you wear a tali when you pray, right? Just don't think that the tali in itself is a magic charm that gives you access to God, right? The tali can be the overflowing of your relationship with God and it is the way that you worship him, right? It's totally fine. But don't let the tali be the thing that you think is allowing you to access God. It is only the person of Jesus of Nazareth. And Kovi, I do have a strong warning for people engaging with rabbinic literature it is indeed called the Sea of the Talmud. And the reason why it's called the Sea of the Talmud is because it's so deep and vast that a person can get lost in it. Make sure you understand the written word of God, that you are on elders, that you are under the tutelage of those that have been engaging with these ideas, these questions, and these concepts for a long time and are truly rooted in Jesus of Nazareth.